Hey everyone, Car with Literate Lessons bringing you a deep dive into the world of Pokemon VGC. Uh, today starts our new series here on YouTube uh, where I look at a specific Pokemon and go over common movesets and items, the history of the Sword and Shield meta, and kind of how to play against it, how to play with it, things like that. The goal of this series is being for newer players to kind of grow their skill set, learn how to build, how to play with these Pokemon, how to beat these Pokemon, and overall just make people better players. Um, so if you haven't yet, uh, hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications for when new videos go live, leave a comment down below who you want to see me cover next time. Um, I currently have Friday lined up already, so whoever is listed comments down below, the most liked one down below, will be up for next Wednesday. Uh, today, however, we're looking at the intimidating heel of the Pokemon world, uh, Incineroar. Uh, for those that may not know, Incineroar is the Fire Dark starter from Gen 7, the fully formed, the fully evolved form of Litten. Um, where, so Incineroar has a couple roles on a team, um, a lot of them being kind of this intimidate, pivot, annoying, bulky thing. Um, there's also an attacking variant with assault vest or weakness policy. Those are much less common though. A lot of the common ones are either the bulky intimidate pivot, which is fake out flare blitz, parting shot, and like taunt or snarl. And then there's the bulky mix support, which is a little less common. Um, it uses snarl, taunt, burning jealousy, and fake out, uh, usually foregoing the parting shot because you have snarl, so you can just hard swap in and out all you want. Um, overall though, Incineroar has been a very prominent part of the meta, I would say. Um, introduced in series three. Gosh, that was such a long time ago now. Um, it definitely took the format by storm. Uh, it rose up very quickly, uh, matching Arcanine's use of stats, stats very quickly. Uh, I believe through series three, they were about 30% apiece, which at the time was fairly high because Togekiss was the most used at about 45 or 50 uh, in series three, and uh, Incineroar was very close behind it with Arcanine and Dragapult. Um, however, after series three, when we got into series four and series five, Arcanine started to dip. It started to get less, um, less usage overall, just because Incineroar was bulkier. Incineroar had a better typing. Um, Technically, I, I would say it's a better typing because dark coverage is very important. Being having dark type stab is really good. Um, so it's it's iffy on if you want to say actually better typing because it's more weaknesses. But um, Incineroar's utility started to kind of just pull it up into the upper echelon of what we call the meta here. Um, Pokemon like trick like sets like Trick Room, things like Tailwind, a lot of priority. So Fake Out was having Fake Out up was very very important, and uh, being able to kind of just like weaken physical attackers, which was also a very common thing at the time, uh, was really good. Being able to remove a weakness policy boost after a swap in, swap out, swap in or even a swap in parting shot out, and then you swap in again, and they're minus one now instead of being plus two. So it was it was really cool just having a Sonora in the format, being able to be this intimidate pivot going in and out. It made series five a great series to play in because it was a lot of decisions. It was very bulky. Nothing was blowing, getting blown up left and right. Whereas in series six, Incineroar got banned because it was in the top 10 usage of doubles, I believe, and singles. Um, to the surprise of no one. Uh, series 6 was a weird one just because they did a ban list. They had never done that before. Um, before that ban, Incineroar was very high usage. It was actually above... Uh, it ended up being above Dogekiss at almost 45% of all Player Cups teams. Um, and with Incineroar gone, Arcanine came back, but it didn't really get to do anything because Porygon Z and Special Attackers kind of ruled that format. So Intimidate wasn't as important, so you didn't have to play Arcanine on your team like you did way back in Series 2 and 3. Um, ever since it, we moved on to Series 7, though, with Crown Tundra coming out, um, 
Incineroar has just been a dominant part of the format. It's on 61% of all teams currently, according to Archidex. Um, that means on average, every three out of five teams are going to have an Incineroar on them. So knowing what they do, how to beat them, and what they're carrying is usually a, a good way to just start to learn how to play around them. Um, the top three moves, uh, this is almost every Incineroar at this point, Fake Out, Flare Blitz, Parting Shot. Like, Almost every Incineroar has that, unless you see an Assault Vest. It's very, very easy to assume that they have these three moves. Um, that last move slot, usually reserved for Snarl or Taunt, depends on what the team's doing. Uh, Trick Room carries Snarl, Taunt usually is on faster teams. Um, Assault Vest variants usually carry Darkest Larry and U-Turn. Um, Darkest Larry is also on the Weakness Policy sets, but not U-Turn, just a little thing to think about there because you don't want to reset your boosts via u-turn coming out of the game um common items here though it's berries i, I could have lumped berries together and it would have been 60 percent of the items here um but um i ended up lumping the pinch berries together which totaled about 28 percent and i put citrus berry all on its own which is about 34 um berries are very good on a cinema even in this unnerve legendary format um, because usually Incineroar neuters them into the ground via stat drops, so they have to switch out. So after they've chipped you down to one third or half or whatever, you get to eat your berry. <laughs> it's it's so it's great. Um, safety goggles is the next common item after the berries. Um, usually deals deals with Amoongus very well, deals with Venusaur very well. You don't have to worry about rage powder or sleep powder or sand or hail or anything like that. So you take less chip damage. It's actually a very good item, and I'm surprised it's not seeing more usage right now. Um, Assault Fist here at 12%. It's not common enough to really talk about. Um, back in Series 3 and Series 4, Assault Vest was very common because it's a very physical heavy set. So having a... Like, being able to put on Assault Vest and then invest in HP, Attack, and Defense was a very common thing to do. And then the weakness policy here at 1%. This is super niche. This was a one-time thing. It was like about a week in Series 3 that was really popular. And then this is there's still like a straggler or two that like to do this. Um, the current sets on your screen are probably the most common. I would expect to see these almost every time. So I would calculate for these two sets almost every time. Um, the cool part about the Assault Vest is you get to be a faster Incineroar. Uh, whereas if you don't have Assault Vest, you have to invest a little bit more in Special Defense and a little bit more in Defense so you don't go down all the time. Um, a lot of these sets, though, carry, like I said, Fake Out, Flare Blitz, Parting Shot. Um, and the cool part is with that first set, you could slap any item on that Incineroar and it'd be fine. If you don't have the Safety Goggles or you don't want a Safety Goggles, you can put a Berry on it. If you don't like the Berry, you can put Expert Belt on it. You can put anything under the sun as long as it's not an assault vest you'll probably be fine um as for this assault vest set u-turn flare blitz snarl instead of darkest lariat and fake out i think snarl on your assault vest and sinor especially if you're faster is very good because a fast snarl means you take less special damage overall to begin with um the next two sets here are much less common um i would say the full move set special set is a very Relic of the Past. You won't see this anymore usually. Uh, Flare Blitz is just a much better damage outsource, whereas in, with Burning Jealousy, when it happened, when it started to tick up in popularity, Burn was very prevalent. Lumberry wasn't as high, things like that. So getting a burn off on a lot of the physical attackers was very, very good, especially since things like Metagross, and, uh, not Metagross, um, things like uh, um, Colossal and things like that. You didn't want to... Uh, you didn't want to be able to hit, you didn't really worry about hitting them with a flare, but you kind of just wanted to spread damage, being able to get a couple of burn and things like that. Um, in Series 3, though, we saw the weakness policy set, like I said, for about a week. It was very popular. You'd set Trick Room with a Dusclops or something else like a set Trick Room. Um, and then you would either Bulldoze or Rock Tomb or something to proc your policy. And then Incinero would Dynamax at that same turn and just sweep. Um, this set doesn't have Fake Out, but a lot of the sets started run over running Fake Out, Darkest Lariat, Flare Blitz, and Protect. Um, you got Max Strike to lower speed, so if you asked after Trick Room, Incineroar became one of the fastest things on the field, uh, and stuff like that. So it was very, very cool just seeing how these uh, bulky weakness policy sets kind of 
rose and then fell very quickly. Um, and they probably would still work in this format today. Incineroar's typing is still very good, feeling fire, dark, um, being very good against physical attackers and special attackers via Snarl and Parting Shot. Um, the one downside is if you Dynamax it, you don't get to do the Intimidate swapping like you probably want to be doing with it. Um, Series 8 is a very physical heavy format. I believe 60% of all moves are physical in this format right now, which that's a lot compared to like what the defense's output looks like. Um, so being able to do uh, intimidate swapping is very good. So that's why the bulky pivot is very, very popular right now. Um, fake out, having fake out has always been a very good tool. Uh, being able to stop prankster stuff with tailwind or prank like, like a uh, prankster fake tears or things like that. Um, being able to just prevent that going up or stopping screens or stopping uh, any kind of speed control or any kind of like setup has just been very popular. Um, it also kind of helps in trick against Trick Room. You would be able to uh, fake out one and use your other Pokemon to maybe blow up the setter or you can use it to set up your own Trick Room and make it to where your setter doesn't die by getting doubled up into. So fake out's always just been a very good tool to have. Um, it's all it's insane bulk though is the pride and joy of Incineroar being very bulky as it is means you just live hits you probably shouldn't live um, that being said there's still ways to get around it um, it's weak to rock ground water and fighting which rock ground and fighting are all very common types right now there's a bunch of steel types there's a bunch of fire types there's a bunch of flying types so these three types are, are very common to see on teams um, Water is usually just like kind of slapped on the teams. Um, Kyogre's very popular water type right now. Uh, there's also teams playing Kingdra. There's teams playing Milotic again, things like that. Um, speaking of Milotic, anything with Defiant or Competitive is also a very good option against Incineroar. Um, things like Thunderous, Milotic, uh, Galarian Zapdos, um, Art. I wouldn't say Galarian Articuno is that great because it's a psychic flying type and we just get blown up, but um, definitely those three, especially since all of them have a super effective attack that can hit Incineroar very, very hard. So they go to plus one and then they max knuckle or they muddy water or they superpower in the case of Thunderous and things like that. Um, the other option is just don't care about Intimidate. Things like Solgaleo and Metagross with that have the ability to ignore stat drops, things like Kyogre and Milotic again that just don't care. They just are going to attack you with a special attack anyway and outspeed you and then blow you up. Um, and other things like that, just helping to chip away at Incineroar is just a very good uh, plan of attack. So overall here, Incineroar, we've kind of figured out it's just like very bulky, has Intimidate, likes to swap in and out. Um, makes your physical attacks or attackers weaker. So being able to combat this with water or ground types is usually a very good thing. Landorus is a very good counter. Kyogre is a very good counter. Um, Thunderous is probably one of the premier counters, which we're talking about Thunderous on Friday. So I'll have a lot to talk about on that one too. Um, you can always play around Fake Out using Protect. If you're trying to set up and you don't think you can get it off because they have Fake Out on the field, just take the turn, Protect. You're not going to lose a whole lot being uh, being cautious there. Um, and always chip away at Incineroar if possible. Any kind of chip damage is good because a lot of the times Incineroar doesn't have recovery outside of a berry. So if you can chip it down to just below, just above half or just above a third, and then oak, oak, take it out the rest of the way with a super effective hit, you're usually in a pretty good spot. That being said, I want to thank you all for watching and hanging out with me for the first episode. How do you think I did? Um, comment down below what you think of the episode, what you think of the series. Are you excited? Are you dis do you dislike it? I, I want a lot of feedback here. I know I try to cover a lot of information very quickly, but I'm trying to get these in under 20 minutes if, if I can. Uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button, ring the bell for notifications for when new videos go live. Follow us on Twitter at LR Lessons, at Musical underscore 33, and at Mr. Missouri 25 for all of our Twitter stuff. You can also come join the Discord, suggest Pokemon to be down there. Uh, the link's down below in the description. Um, we're also on Twitch. Uh, Carter streams Nuzlocks. I stream random Pokemon stuff every once in a while. It's great. Um... That being said, have a wonderful morning, afternoon, evening, wherever you're at in the world, and we will see you all on Friday with some thunderous. Bye, guys.